We recently talked about Optimus bots, Tesla bots, and you guys had a few comments. So I brought Randy Kirk back to once again share his insight. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. Randy, great to have you. Thanks for coming back. Always so much fun to be with you. Yeah. yeah. And so we're seeing like Optimus, one of my favorite, favorite subjects. I love it. It's so exciting. So let's just jump in here. If a robot can last 20 years with maintenance and can do an average physical job with full intellectual power, that would be worth at least six figures a year, not counting inflation. What do you think of that? Well, yeah. Uh, I would say uh, probably multiple six figures. We're talking about, so there's, it, it, depending on the situation, if you have a factory that where the robot is capable of putting in 24 seven, that's the equivalent of four shifts. Okay, you got three shifts during the week, you got two shifts on the weekend. Obviously, that's not how it works, but that's the basic concept. Then in addition to that, you don't have any breaks. You don't have any uh, lunches. You don't have any. Uh, you probably have a multiple in terms of the capability of the robot, uh, both in terms of how fast it can work as well as how few mistakes it makes. So you're probably getting more than four times a human and a fee minimum, 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 minimum today for a human in a factory Counting all the overhead and expenses associated with the human is a fifty thousand. Multiply that times four, you've got two hundred thousand just to start out. That makes sense. And be well, uh, if it's anything like Boston Dynamics, their dog can only run for forty five minutes before it needs to charge. But if you're at a station, you can just plug yourself in, right? And it's you know you could you could say the same about cars. You can't use it while you're charging it, but you can. You can but you can use it for Netflix. You can use it as your office while you're doing other things and it's charging. So it's, it doesn't have to go offline to charge. So I think that's totally valid. Next comment was, I'm not convinced Optimus would be able to install the retainers for the caps on the water bottles Randy described. We'll see how useful they actually turn out to be. Could they do it today? You know, there I, I should have I should have had my prop again. I'm sorry, I don't have the prop handy. But uh, you know, it, 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 most people know what a bicycle water bottle looks like. It's got the little tether around it, and then the tether holds the cap in place, and then it's a pop-on cap, not a screw-on cap. So basically, all that's required is to place the edge of the tether against the plastic bottle, pull it so that you get enough. The rubber band expands enough on the tether to be able to put it in place and then bring the cap around and push it down. Uh, one of the future comments I think that you're going to be talking about is somebody worrying about designing the bottle so that you need as little automation as possible. Well, I actually did that. We actually designed the way that the bottle cap was be so that it was in a, in a pyramid shape so that when the cap came down, it would be making the various clicks, the waterproofing clicks, uh, easy so it could be something that would be automatically pushed down not something you'd have to like jiggle around to get it to work so yes it was uh, designed in advance to accept automation and i would like to point out to the viewers if you're sick of hearing about the water bottles stop commenting about the water bottles and uh, we did have a gentleman say well you know i i don't care about his so-called expertise and i said but i do and that's why i invited him to discuss this but so here's a way my yes my ba my background is not only in manufacturing water bottles manufacturing caps printing on the bicycle water bottles uh we were the best printer in the world and that's not disputable uh on the, those kind of bottles um because we were the first to do four color process and all kinds of other things um uh and then in addition i have done extrusion i've done injection blow i've done uh regular blow uh molding i'm sorry um, and I've done, um, uh, uh, did I say extrusion? Yes. And then um, all kinds of uh, uh, distri distribution, packing, uh, design of products, design. Anyway, it goes on and on and on. So this is not a limited little, oh, I made some water bottles, put caps on them. Right. And it's what, what, what I was asking about on the previous videos and you answered was about processes and procedures. It doesn't matter if what the product is. The widget process is largely similar. Right. And I pre and that's why 
That's why I brought you on. So here's a comment. Those companies that nobody knows the CEO personally only attract a certain amount of talent when you're connected to the people in, the, in your part of the now and you know what's going on. You're going to attract different types of engineers and better people to work for you because they feel like they know you. Nobody's trying to go work for a GM out of college. Now, you, you and I have the benefit of a little bit of hindsight. These comments were made before the shareholder meeting. What kind of people do so do we does is the bot attracting the best people so i think the your commenter makes a great point i well we know that they got three and a half million applications for i don't know how many i guess they added thirty thousand ish. dish yeah. yeah about thirty thousand new jobs last year and they had 3.6 million applications for those uh, when I was applying for UCLA Law, it was the hardest law school in the world to get into. There was 3,000 uh, position, 3, applications for 300 positions. That's only a 10 to 1 ratio. This is 3.6 million. For, that's a 100 to 1 ratio for the 30,000 jobs. So uh, as he points out, it's harder than getting into the hardest uh, schools in the, in the world. So, But yes, I think a ton of it has to do with Elon Musk. I think that he is so transparent, so warm, so honest. People that actually study him, actually watch him all the time. I've seen virtually every word he's ever spoken in public. I've read almost everything that he's written on Twitter. He doesn't lie. He's straight out there. He wants the best for the world. He wants the best for Tesla. He wants the best for the long-term stockholders. Um, he's, 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 he's genuine. And yes, I think that attracts people to come to work for him. Yeah, a lot of a lot of a lot of people don't share our belief that he is honest, and he is honest uh, to a fault. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, he is ideal. Well, but he promised. Okay, stop saying promised. That's not the right word. He suggests, and he's very careful to couch those expectations. But it's still the headlines are still well broken promises. Right. Everyone thought FSD would be solved by now. It wasn't. He was not alone. Go, go lavish some criticism on some other folks, too. So Alexander says, personally, I'd rather have it being sold than leased. Target price would be 15000 considering they want to bring the next-gen vehicle to half price to about 25000 Seeing the bot size, 15000 would be nice. Maybe even 10000 a few years later when they're ramped up production and it's used more widely. 15, 10 to 15000 what do you think of that number? So my, my banker used to say that the main reason he was willing to, to bank me was because my margins were 50%. There's very unusual in manufacturing to have 50% margins. Uh, Tesla is perfectly happy to have 20, 25, 30% margins. Um, General Motors and some of these other folks are very happy to have 6, 8, 10% margins because they've got all this aftermarket stuff that they can do for cars. So my banker was like, you have, you're a, man, a U.S. manufacturer with 50% margins. Well, so your guy is right. If they could double the price, let's say it cost him 6000 7000 and they could double the price to fifteen, yeah, that would be a great business proposition. But do you think why? they would? Yeah. But do you think do they that? would? <laughs> right. Why do that? I do that. <laughs> so if you can make it for six and rent it for 20 a year, um, you know, that sounds like a better deal to me. Now, they could do it. The other way, they could sell it for 15 or 20 or 25 or 30 or whatever the number is, which any manufacturer would pay in a, a split second, and then have a licensing fee on top of that for, say, another 10000 a year. So that'd be another way to kind of get where this guy wants to get, which is, okay, I can get the thing in the building uh, for this cost, and then my annual fee is less. So that, that's a, that'd be another way to do it. I, I, would, I would agree. Why start cheap uh when the when the new models come out they start with the most expensive one at the highest price they can get away with uh mj mj says i'm optimistic but i still think it's at least five years for a viable robot they did just start less than two years ago again these comments were made before uh the shareholder meeting when we got to see how much progress they've made in a month yeah, right <laughs> <clears throat> what do you think? Five years for a viable robot? So I have had so many experts on my show. I know you've been on some shows. I know you've had some folks. Um, you go down the list of everybody that I've had on my show who are robotics experts, who are uh, AI experts, who are factory manufacturing experts, 
uh, who are uh, biologically, I mean, in other words, they're humanoid experts. They understand how the human function works. I've had all these people on from every aspect of the robotic problem. And then all of them say, there's no reason, not one of them has, not one of them has barked back and said there couldn't be a thousand of these working in Tesla factories by the end of this year. Now, will there be? That's another question. Now, and that was months ago. That was three, four, five months ago. They've got, they, Elon just said, we are building all the components, all of them. They're making the components. So that means they can make the components. Now, they may be 3D printing them at this point. They may not have set up a line yet to manufacture the components because, you know, they're not ready to, to go full production. But when they decide to, I don't care whether it's plastic or metal or any of the processes they're talking about, you're looking at maximum three months from the day you decide to make the tooling to the time that you're producing these kind of products. So there's no mechanical reason in terms of the product itself why it can't be done within this time frame that I'm talking about, within this year, and then mass production next year. There's no software issue. He said it's the same software that they're already using in FSD. They don't need to build new software. Are there training issues? Well, they have all these trainers already on the facility that are training the the uh, the the biggest the big bot the car uh, to manage roads at uh, with uh, five five thousand pounds of metal going eighty miles an hour. This is going to be one hundred and twenty pounds of metal going five miles an hour. So in terms of training, whether that's by uh, electrically hooking up. Uh, a human and doing the processes, which was shown, whether that's by tell, having the robot watch the person do it and then repeating it, whether it's by simulation, whether it's even by just uh, putting in neural language. They have all these different methods to train it. Um, so training is solved, software is solved, hardware is solved. What's holding it up? I can't think what would what it would be. The thing I saw was, so let's say it is five years. Do you under, do you, dear commenter, understand the value proposition that you're suggesting? If your pessimism, and I don't think this is necessary, I've seen there are more pessimistic comments than this, but let's say it's, ten, let's say, oh, they won't be able to, you know, mass produce for 10 years. So you're telling me that in 10 years, this is going to happen, that it's going to happen, that it's going to explode. The... That, well, but companies have been doing this for 20 years. Right. When Honda started building Asimo, the biggest, most powerful supercomputer in the world was had less compute power than today's cheapest smartphones. So right there should tell you a bunch of answers, in my opinion. It's a, it's a confluence. <clears throat> we have the yeah. various things happening in so in software, in training, in neural nets, all of these things are coming together at the same point, which is why uh, it is possible now what wasn't possible five years ago, three years ago. Sure. And that's the same thing we saw with batteries. It's the same thing we've seen with, with a, a lot of things where the chemistry got good at the same time that manufacturing got good at the same time as all of it. Yeah. So this is a bigger one. Here we go. Well, Elon says it will do these things, but not anytime soon. I've been waiting several for several of his products for years now. I seem to have uh, seen and read about a few others working on robots for production, and yet Elon says his will be going soon. I've been waiting for the mobile service people to come to work on my car for over a month now. They still do not have a date for me. Great car, but in many areas, Elon and his team are failing customers. You guys on the YouTube are so far up Elon's butt, I'm surprised we can hear ya. <laughs> now, just for myself, I have a snorkel, so that I can breathe when I'm there you far. Go. <laughs> but that's just my solution. I don't know. Maybe you have a different one. So, what do you what do you what do you make of that? So I've had uh, I needed uh, I broke a window. I was out in Death Valley um, and broke a window uh, on our Model Y, and uh, they were there within um, I think the same day uh, on my driveway putting in a window, and then uh, see you later. It's a big gray sea in it. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure. I'm sorry that this individual's had such tough times with the service, but I've never had a problem with the service. On the other side of the coin, we're not talking about the service side of the business anyway. We're talking about manufacturing. 
I don't know if there, that'd be an interesting poll. I don't know if there's any serious person out there that thinks that, that Musk's enterprises are not at the pinnacle of manufacturing prowess in the world. I don't know if there's anybody that would dare try to suggest they currently have the highest return on invested capital rate of any company in history, and it's just getting better. So I don't know how you become a better manufacturer than they are. So, uh, yeah, I, I, if Elon said he did absolutely say that he thought they would be in production at the end of this year. Now, that was a year ago, but that's what he said. Yeah, and he misses deadlines, but he still makes the impossible happen late. So it's not, and I, I don't know how you can start with saying customer service is bad, therefore, because like you said, that is completely different. That is not the same thing. And uh, I would point out to uh, RB here that I am not uh, a fanboy. I am an analyst. I am not an influencer. I am an analyst. I uh, appreciate his work. I disagree with him on a number of things. I get criticism from diehard Elon fans when I say things they don't like. But I'm an analyst and I analyze and it takes me wherever it takes me. So I'm a fanboy. I know. I, like, I know. I'm also called the Uber optimist or the <laughs> Uber, you know, the Uber, uh, you know, uh, uh, fanboy here. I am, uh, but by the same token, I just challenge people when I make my statements, show me where I'm wrong. I'm, I'm very interested to see where I've made a mistake. Yeah. And that's, I think, the right approach. So, guys, we need some more questions from you, some more comments. So you can go back and watch the original. It will be linked below. We will be answering more questions. Uh, I'm going to invite Randy back next week. And, Randy, would you do me a favor next week and wear the exact same outfits so it feels like we shot them back to back? If you'd do that for me, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> so, guys, what did we miss? What do we misunderstand? Leave it in them comments below. Thanks, as always, to my patrons who get early access, bonus content, all that good stuff. And if you want to support... Uh, Mr. Kirk over here, there is a book behind him, The Elon Musk Mission, which was co-written by Lars from Best in Tesla. Friend of the show. Friend in real life. Great guy. So uh, thank you, Randy, for hanging out, and we will talk to you real soon.